photoelectric effect, we are going to demonstrate it, but first of all, because there's not an awful lot to see when you do demonstrate it, we're going to take a look at an anim a couple of animations to try and get a feel for what's actually happening. If I start at, not that one, but this one. Photoelectric effect is what finally demonstrated a quite very important concept in physics. Photons. What astoundingly significant concept. All it kick-started all of it. Wave particle duality in what sense? So photons are packets of energy. As opposed to being waves. waves. Yeah, so with really what is demonstrated is light is made up of waves, right? And that kick-started all quantum theory, and that kick-started the Einstein, the Max Planck, and, and, and so on. So the idea here is that if you shine light, let me go up to high intensity light, so or it's, I can put, I have a lamp bulb here, I have a metal here, if I shine sufficient uh, high frequency light at this, I'll knock off electrons and the electrons will be attracted over, this is the positive end, it's not obvious, but this should be the positive end, and the electrons get attracted over. So I turn it on, it's automatically on, I increase the intensity of the light and no electrons whatsoever are being knocked off. Now the wave, the understanding of light based on the wave theory says if you leave it for long enough, sooner or later, enough waves will come to knock an electron off. What they realized was it doesn't matter how much, how long you wait, or how close you bring the light bulb, or how, what, what wattage the light bulb is, nothing you can do will knock the electrons off of their atoms, or off the surface of the metal, unless you do what? Want you to increase or decrease the frequency? Increase. So you need to make the light much more energetic. So actually all I'm doing there is changing the intensity. What I want to do is change the frequency. So if I go towards the IR, and at the moment you keep in track of the current, there is no current whatsoever. So no matter how intense the light is, I can't knock any electrons off of the metal. And lo and behold, once I get to about there, the electrons start being knocked off, and I have a tiny current. At this stage, I can do either of two things. I can increase the frequency of the light shining on it, or alternatively, the very fact that I have got electrons going off of the cathode, which is a negatively charged metal, if I now ease the intensity, what will happen? Will they go faster? Uh, okay. you knock more, like you're getting more uh, light shining on it, so I keep an eye on the current as I increase the intensity, and you find you're getting many, many more electrons being knocked off. And the understanding of this, and it was Einstein who postulated, they knew of the phenomenon, it was Einstein who postulated the ex explanation. He suggested, you know what, he said this would make sense if we consider light not so much to be a wave, although we do know it's a wave from Young's interference and Young's slits and all of that. He said, I'm not saying light is made up of particles, but wouldn't it sort of explain what was going on if you suggested that light was made up of little bundles, and either the bundles have enough energy to knock the electrons off, in which case each bundle will knock off an electron, or alternatively the bundles don't have enough energy to knock electrons off, in which case it doesn't matter how many bundles of energy you throw at it, or how intense the bundles of energy are, they're not going to be able to knock it off. But he said what this does suggest is that light is composed of bundles of energy, and he calls those bundles of energy? Photons. Photons. Right? And his paper was, I think it was called, a heuristic way of looking at light. And a heuristic are looking at the photoelectric effect. And what he meant by heuristic is this, it's a way of trying to understand it. He said, I'm, I'm new to this game, nobody knows me, my name is Albert Einstein, but this is just a way of looking at this phenomenon that kind of makes sense. And people say, go away out of that, you're daft. How can light be made up of particles? Everybody knows light is made up of waves. And it took years before people finally realized they tried every argument they could to show that light being made up of particles was wrong. And no matter what they got, they couldn't get over this little phenomenon right here. So the photoelectric effect is actually what won Albert Einstein the Nobel Prize. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Right, for this, I need to put on, we saw there there was zinc, so I used a piece of zinc. This is one of the reasons why I could never get this to work before. I even did this this morning and it worked fine. I tried it now and it didn't work. And the only thing I have changed in between was that I just sanded it. So I think, I'm hoping the only reason it doesn't work is because I've got to make sure there's nothing but zinc there so I don't want an oxygen or an oxide layer on top. I put that on, I now need to charge this negatively because I want to put lots of electrons onto it. So this guy here, charging by induction, we don't need to worry about how it works. Bring this guy up to it, I can't see what's going on. Put my finger up, take my finger away, take this away, and it is now charged negatively. We'll see later on what happens if you charge it positively. 
So it's charged negatively. I now bring up ultraviolet light. In fact, what I might do is start off with normal light, just to show I haven't done this. You just see if it works with normal light. And it should have no effect. This will look silly if it works if it goes down. So it has no effect on it whatsoever. If you had four or five or ten or fifty light bulbs, it would have no effect on it whatsoever. Because yeah, but, but surely, 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 even the high wavelengths are, are still coming out of that light bulb. Uh, the low wavelengths, high frequencies. So yeah. it's the high frequency that's going to pop the electron off. Yeah, but surely they're all coming out of the light bulb, as, as well as the, as the What sort of frequency do we need coming out of it? And so right. corresponding to what wavelength? High frequency, low wavelength. So you need, you need ultraviolet light. Okay. And this guy wouldn't have ultraviolet light. So you've oh, got okay. white light, you've got from yellow on one side, Richard of Yorkie, so you've got red up to blue, red up to blue, and maybe just hinting on a tiny bit of violet, right. but not enough to bring it down. So it's not the intensity that's important, it's not how close it is that's important, it's the frequency that's important, frequency on the wavelength. All right, Ross? So we get rid of that, and we now come on with our ultraviolet light, and again, this will look silly if it doesn't work, and it also look good if I saw what's happening, so I bring it right up to it, right up to it. Can you, you can get that done? Oh, it is. Yeah. This is quite possibly the most important, least impressive experiment in the history of science. It's really weird. So there's that becoming very awkward. Shooting electrons are moving. Yeah. And we take it away, it's so it's nothing to that. So nothing's going on. By hitting the ultraviolet light on it, I'm knocking off electrons. And you're right. That's the where are the electrons going in this? Where are they going to and from? There were millions of electrons on the surface of that when I charge it negatively. Okay. So by shining the electron, the UV light on it, some of those electrons got enough energy to actually leave the atom, to leave this altogether. I say when, that, when the electrons leave that thing altogether, that thing moves out. Yeah, so it was negatively charged. Negatively charged, two particles similarly charged repel each other. So as I got rid of the excess negative charge, these guys no longer repelled each other, and the two right. legs came down. So do you have to give it the electrons before you can take them away? Yeah, you have to give them an excess supply of electrons, because really, you can't, it's too difficult to knock the electrons from that if they're tightly bound. Even if you have a really, like, I don't know. Uh, possibly if this was going from ultraviolet up to the X-ray. In fact, the X-ray would knock electrons off. X-rays are therefore ionizing radiation. Because there'll be metal there that's minding its own business, and this comes onto it, and it knocks electrons off. Whereas with UV, it'll probably only be strong enough to knock extra electrons off. But then it also depends upon the metal. It's much easier for cesium to lose electrons than it is for something like zinc. Zinc we use particularly because iron, the electrons are even too tightly bound in iron. And it's again more than, it's not so much correct to say that there's a, each atom's got its own bunch of electrons. With a metal, you've kind of got a sea of electrons floating along the top of it. So you're just bumping those guys off. If you had a gas, each electron would, each atom would have its own electrons. But with a metal, the surface tends to be a little to see it. We want to demonstrate a couple of things while we're here. First of all, we demonstrated that light wouldn't do it. But we want to demonstrate if it's charged, if I bring something up to it, if I charge it positively, so here we go, finally, let's finish with this in a minute. Charge it once again. In this case, I'm charging it positively. Take that away, take that away. It's charged positively. Now, I didn't know which was positive and which was negative until I tried the two of them there. So in advance, you don't have to know which is which. And all you do in this case is bring it right up close to it and hope that the leaf does not fall. And we won't hold it there too long. Just Would the leaf not even happen to the leaf? No. Because in that case, it was charged positively. It had lost electrons to begin with. So by making it lose more electrons, if anything, the leaf would just diverge farther. And I don't think, even if you started off with it neutral, which was Ivan's question, if that was neutral to begin with, and I shone the UV light on it, it doesn't, it's harder for it to lose electrons when it's neutral than it is to lose electrons when it's got an excess of electrons. So it's easier to do it when it's charged negatively to begin with.